we talk a lot about the whole child in education, which we should, but do we talk enough about the notion of the whole educator, actually seeing their interests outside of education, what makes us connect with our kids? In this conversation with Sarah Thomas, I've known her for years, but I learned things about her that I had no clue about. And I think when we were talking about this, we ranged the conversation. We talked about Drake. We talked about Saved by the Bell, Alanis Morissette, her singing career, all these things that actually she brings into her experience as an educator, which actually helps her connect with kids. And I think this is such a good reminder for me that, yeah, this is a podcast on education, but it's really a podcast about educators, a podcast about the work that we do in education and understanding that it's not limited to just what we do in schools, but it's connected to all that we are as people. I hope you enjoy this podcast. I love talking with Sarah. She's an absolutely incredible educator, incredible person. I know you're going to love it. Thanks for listening. Hey everyone, this is George Kuros with another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. I actually have Dr. Sarah Thomas with me. And if you know anything about Sarah, uh, and I've actually got some chance or got a chance to talk to her a little bit before this, uh, there are so many different things that she does. And it's absolutely incredible. I found out that, you know, she's a singer. uh, She does a ton of stuff in education. I've known her, her work as an entrepreneur. And I'm so excited to have her here because the thing that I love about Sarah and that I've kind of watched for years It's just her willingness to learn openly and to learn alongside other people. And I think that's just such a really fascinating uh, thing to see because a lot of times we kind of just see people's success and we just kind of see them get to a point. And I think what Sarah does really well is that she kind of shows the process and shares uh, the learning of, of, you know, what she's kind of going through and and something I just love and admire about her. So uh, in your bio, you actually say that everyone has a story. What's yours? So I'm going to actually start with that question. So like, what is your story? You know, like, how do you do the work that you do now in education? Like, what is your background and, and how did you get to the point of the work that you're doing today? Thank you so much for having me here. I'm super, super excited to be here um, on the podcast. So thank you. Um, and hello to everybody listening. My name is Sarah Thomas and uh, I've been in education now for 16 years. I came through alternative certification um, and, you know, I've taught everything from first to 12th at some point. Um, but, you know, I was, I was, I did my bachelor's in radio, TV, film, um, around that time. Then my mom started teaching middle school and I started going down to her class and, you know, working with the kids. And I was just like, Oh, this is, this is where I want to be. This is what I want to do. So, um, it was almost like serendipity. One day I came downstairs, like I had re-enrolled in the master's program in, uh, intercultural communications, came down the stairs, saw that they were recruiting for teachers for a nearby district. And I was just like, all right, well, let me, uh, let me go for it. And I have to say it was, it was a steep learning curve. It wasn't simple at all. There was a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, growing pains, <laughs> but eventually just through the help of just, you know, some amazing people that I got to know and work with. And, um, that's kind of, that's, that's how I eventually found myself here today. And it's funny because I actually, um, you're like the, oh, I was saying this to you before, you're like the only person <laughs> that's ever tweeted you're listening to my podcast. So like, there's people that I know listen to it and they'll send me like <laughs> private messages, but you tweeted, you just were tweeting it one day and actually had a list of like, hey, who's here's people I would love to um, interview this year. And you were actually on my list before you tweeted it. So I don't want you to think to just because oh, you sweet. tweeted it. Yeah, so I was like, hey, I want to <laughs> talk to Sarah. And so one of the things that, um, kind of watching, uh, your work and seeing is, is the, your work with EduMatch. And I, and I'm pretty sure that you found it. I don't know if you, um, like you found that on your own, right? EduMatch and like, tell us, yeah, about, yeah. Just kind of yeah. what, what's EduMatch and like, how did that start? What is it now? And I just, I kind of love watching the progression. Oh yeah, totally. So EduMatch has been around since 2014. Um, it was just kind of, once again, serendipity. It seems like a lot of uh, important moments in life come about through that way. But um, I was chatting on Boxer with Rafans Davis, a uh, good, uh, good friend of both of ours. And we were talking about uh, just education. And she said something that reminded me of a conversation I had with my cousin about a month before who used to teach um, math in New York City. And I was just like, okay, well, 
you know, you and my cousin should talk and y'all should talk with uh, Chris Avilas who does gamification because it was about like using fantasy sports and math or something. So, you know, I was just like, okay, the three of you should talk and see what you come up with because I'm sure it'll be awesome. And then at that moment, I kind of had the idea. I was just like, okay, you know, maybe I could do this, like connect people along similar lines of interest. So at that point, I set up a, a Twitter account. Our very first person, you know, once I tweeted out what I wanted to do with it, Someone hit us back right away. Uh, when I say us, I've said us since day one because it really is us. Because if it's not, you know, it, Sarah by herself is no edgy match, right? So it, it really does <laughs> take a village. But the very first person who tweeted back uh, was in Australia. And so I asked him about himself. He gave me a bio. So I tweeted it out with different hashtags. So, um, after that point, set up a Google form, more people joined. And um, as people joined, they brought their ideas like, okay, let's do a Voxer group. Let's do a podcast. Let's do some ed camps. Um, let's publish, you know, so it's just mm. kind of grown organically. So Sarah, one of the things that I love about Edumatch and something I'm really passionate about is just, just kind of the whole focus on connecting people, right. And connecting people were, with interests and, and shared ideas. And so you, like you are a master of that. It's, it's been incredible to watch because like you said, it's not just, it's not just like, this is about you. You've actually created something that is about other people. And I think for me, when we talk about leadership, I think that's just such a great like message for leaders, because I think a lot of times leaders get into it and it's about ego. And I think that mm -hmm. I've, I've recognized your work because you've empowered people, which to be honest, you makes you look better. You know what I mean? Oh, thank you. <laughs> but I think that sometimes when people get in there, it's like, I want the credit, I want all of this stuff. But if you really are effective um, in empowering people, you will actually get those things, right? And I don't know if that's something that is, I know that you, you're doing it out of, you know, it's not like, hey, if I get all these people doing this stuff, it will make me look better. But it kind of does too, right? <laughs> right? Like it, it does, right? I, I think it's, it's a powerful thing. Yeah, I think just, you know, all of us winning together, that is just, you know, that that really drives me. Um, you know, it's like this whole connection, you know, we can all get better um, for our students, you know, and when when one of us win, all of us win. So, you know, and, and so, and you know, this is actually one of the reasons I want you on the podcast is is and it's this might sound a little bit weird, but you basically own a publishing company. I own a publishing company. And I've supported a ton of your authors. I know that you've supported a ton of mine. I know, um, you know, my partner, Dave Burgess, and it's kind of this notion, like if you do any business, it's all about like crushing your opponent and like, you can't work together. I'm like, no, like there's, it's, I have the exact same mentality is that there's room for, you know, everyone to succeed. And I think part of it too, is that I know that when I support your authors, you, your work, and you do the same for me. I actually think we both flourish, whereas the mentality is is kind of the opposite. I don't know what you think of that, or if you've ever noticed that. Because like I know you know that we own a publishing company, and a ton of your authors have asked me to like endorse their books, and yeah, I'm glad to. Like I'm not like no, I can't. Yeah. Right. Like, no. I, like, <laughs> no. like what do you think of that? Because I think it makes us all flourish, right? Even though you know we have yeah separate businesses, right? Yeah, totally, totally. And I, I really want to thank you for, you know, for all of your support and encouragement throughout the years. And, uh, you know, definitely the the collaboration piece, you know, we're, we're all on the same team. We're all trying to, you know, make it a better profession, make it a better experience for our students, you know, um, empower them in their learning journey. So, um, so we, we have the same end goal and, you know, by working together, then, then I feel that we, we are all coming together to, mm. to help make that happen for our students. Yeah. And that's like a, a brilliant point because <laughs> if we're both supporting educators, but I want to like crush yours, <laughs> that's, probably not really, that's probably not really good for kids. Right. At, yeah. At, no. like at the end of the day, it's like, no, I don't want, you know, those messages to go out. And I think. That to me has been, you know, like you, you see this in schools too. Uh, I, I've seen um, people like use the argument like, look, if you know, and I've actually, to be honest, I'm not saying this is like a private school only thing, but I've seen like, hey, uh, as a private school, we don't necessarily want to share like the good stuff that we're doing because then mm -hmm. other people will take these ideas. And I'm like, 
Well, I actually think that's probably beneficial to both of you. I actually think if you can help other people, right. it's going to be, you know, good for those kids, which is why we're here. But I also think that it's mm-hmm. going to make you look good too, right? Like, it's not going to be like, yeah. oh, like, why would I go to that school? And I think that's to me is there, there is like some times there's that feels like a competition. Like when I first started teaching, I remember um, people would say, you better hope that you don't get a teacher that, um, that doesn't want to share their stuff. Right. Cause they'll say like, I've worked on this for 30 mm-hmm. years. I'm not just giving it over to you. And, uh, it was Marlene Bertram. She was my partner teacher. And I remember the first day she's like, here's everything. Here's everything I've done. Take what you like. And like, she just made my life easier. And I think that she, she like instilled yeah. that sharing in me. So like, I don't, Yes. And I'm sure, you know, and that's something you do all the time, right? With education is that you, you have this ability to share not only your thoughts, your ideas, but so many others. Right. And so like, what, like, how did you, like, what made you think to share like that? Like, is that just innate for you? Like, how, how have you seen that benefit? Like your work, not only as an entrepreneur, but as an educator? I mean, the same can be said about blogging, you know, um, I know in terms of creating content, then um, a lot of times we may have an idea, great idea, you know, and and we do it with our students. But if we put it out there and uh, and we share that idea, then somebody else might see it and they might be able to give us some feedback so that we can tweak it, uh, make it better. Or, you know, they might borrow the idea themselves and remix it, put their own spin on it and make it better for, for both of us. So um, a lot goes into that whole sharing piece. Um, and when you when you share, then that also encourages people to share back with you. So mm-hmm. just like how you were saying in, in your example with the um, with the partner teacher, then I mean, that's that's just super awesome, you know, and it's it's through that spirit of collaboration that that we start moving things forward for our for our students. Yeah, and it's, it's funny because when you're talking about that, like I've been blogging for a while and I've been pretty much blogging at least once a week for I think 11 years now. And when a lot of the yeah. blog posts that I've written in the past ended up in my book and if, they're not the original of what I wrote because someone will say, what about this? And challenge me on this. I'm like, oh, it's actually a really good point. And I think people don't even realize that they've helped me write these books by giving me feedback, by sharing some of those ideas, sharing some of those yes. thoughts. And uh, I actually remember, um, you know, like even even someone, you know, kind of gave me like some snappy response. I'm like, that's a good point, but I don't like, I, I don't, you kind of be, right. so I'm going to maybe use that, but I'm not, I'm not going to give you credit because you're kind of being right. jerk about it, right? Like I just, you know, like I think that it is that, that sense that we're all trying to learn, we're all trying to grow, we're all trying to develop. And um, one of the things that I love about your Twitter feed, and I like, I follow you on Facebook, or we're connected on Facebook, I follow you on Twitter. It's, it's, it's so random. It's like, what's Sarah doing now? Yes. And I love it. I just, I'm like, oh, that's Thank interesting. You. That's a different thing. And so uh, I was watching, like in the last year, you've really started talking about like investing and, you know, um, yeah. you know, financial literacy. And this is actually something I'm really interested in too. And I think it w- would be really helpful if we put a more of an emphasis on this in our schools and really help a lot of our kids. And I know, and I actually mentioned, I was going to share the story with you, but I didn't tell you when I graduated high school, uh, I remember I went to college as like my first year and just really didn't know anything about money. And I remember mm-hmm. that I went to university and there's those people that are like, Hey, do you want a credit card? I'm like, yeah, of course I want a credit card. Oh yeah. So I get a credit card and it had like a $500 limit on it. Right. So I spent like $350 on it. Like, no, I didn't max it out or anything. And then it sent me this like notice, like, Hey, you got to pay a minimum payment of like $10 or something like that. I'm like, who, like, I don't, I, I'm not even worried about it. I just, they don't want 10 bucks. <laughs> Right. When I got all the money, I'll pay it back. Right. So then I get like my, you're like, Hey, you got to pay like that $10. And now it's like 12 or whatever. And I'm like, nah, nah, nah. <laughs> I'll just wait till I have it. And so I like, let that sit. And then all of a sudden I'm getting phone calls and it's like, Oh no. <laughs> and so in my head, you know, it wasn't like I didn't have $10 to pay back in my head. I was just like, I, I don't know. I just kind of thought like, Hey, if this is a friend lending me a couple hundred bucks, 
They probably would just want the couple hundred bucks back, right? Right. So, <laughs> so then that actually destroyed my credit. Oh, I man. like had a hard time, you know, getting like a mortgage eventually, all these other things. And I just, mm. I, it, was, it was just totally being naive. Like I didn't know any better. So like, it's kind of interesting um, to think about how many students maybe walk out of schools and don't have that knowledge. And so like, wh- like, I, like what, what actually got you interested in, in some of that stuff? And, you know, like I said, you, you share it, like you, you share, I, I actually saw like some of the ups and downs you were sharing too with investing and so like, what, what got you interested in that in the first place? Oh man, I have to say what really turned me on to it. And it, these two events happened approximately the same time. I'm going to date myself like for real, for real. Um, there was an episode of Say by the Bell that came out where <laughs> Zach Morris like bought some stuff yeah, on margin. I'm going to stop you. I, that okay. is, that is not what I expected. <laughs> How did you get a financial literacy? Well, there's this episode of Saved by the Bell. <laughs> oh, well, of course. Isn't that how everybody gets it through it? You learn about potatoes. Sorry, and, I no. had to interrupt you. I'm like, what? Saved by the Bell? Okay. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yeah. So that, that's when I like first really started thinking about it and around the same time I was in maybe no a few years later in eighth grade then I remember that we um in civics class had like a unit on investing and so I started you know started thinking about it I didn't really do a whole lot with it um and it's it's really wild because now that we're talking about blogs I went back to my very first blog in like 2003 where I was like you know thinking I was going to be Beyonce but not <laughs> um and I did like a music blog mm-hmm. and on it I was just like oh I want to get into stocks and this was like 2003 and I'm just mm-hmm. like I, I just saw this like about two weeks ago it blew my mind but um I started um investing through my job through a 403b program um, and then, you know, the apps started coming along, the investing apps, and I started getting into those probably around like 2013-ish, but I started going really hardcore around 2017, um, you know, after talking to a few friends, um, Dr. Tatul and Toya, huge shout out to him. He sat me down and schooled me about the Robinhood app, and I was just like, ooh. So, you know, I really started getting into it, and I, I went like all in, um, I would say about maybe May of this year. Mm-hmm. And this is this is probably really stupid advice. So I would uh, recommend that anyone listening to this don't follow, but I'll share. Um, I actually took out a, uh, a loan against my 403B from work mm-hmm. because I saw that it had dropped like tremendously. And I was just like, you know what? My returns are better than this. So let me just mm-hmm. go ahead and take out a loan on this. And um, so I took out a loan, started trading it and uh, decimated it. So, yeah, but I ended up making like, I ended up breaking even for the most part. But, um, you know, right now, just trying to learn from those, uh, those early mistakes trading. And, um, you know, I'm good with the investing with letting the money sit there and 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 grow, but uh, trying to learn trading and making those fast trades, like I'm the wolf of Wall Street, didn't work out as easy as it looked at first. (laughs) So that's a thing to do. Like I actually I I invest, but I like even I do stocks, I do it long term, right. And so so you got to kind of be with the ups and downs of that too, right. But yeah, it's good. And this is this is why I appreciate you because it could be easy. You share a lot of stuff. You've had success with it, but you share like, Hey, like you share this didn't work. And I think that's, yeah. that's a part of the process, right? I got to yeah. Now I got to share this with you. Okay. <laughs> so I actually, I don't know. I can't believe that you brought up saved by the bell. Did you see the saved by the bell? Uh, like the unauthorized saved by the <laughs> bell. Did you see it? Yes, I did. I did. So it was just on TV one night and I was like, this, like, it was like a lifetime, right? It wasn't like a, <laughs> is that the one you watched? Like, it was like, I don't know if it was lifetime, but it was like a yeah, lifetime yeah. like channel, right? And I, think, like, I think that's the one I saw too, yeah. With the, I'm so excited, I'm so excited. Yes. Do you remember that part? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what did, did you see that? I actually was, I was like, I'm not watching this stupid thing. And then two hours later, <laughs> like, that was amazing. Was like, oh my gosh, did you, did you yes. Watch? What'd you think? Yeah, yeah. You know, honestly, I don't remember too much of it, but I do remember reading uh, Dustin Diamond's book where he wrote like the tell all about <laughs> Say by the Bell. And it was just, oh my gosh, that was insane. Okay, so I got to ask you this question. Up. Do you, so 
like were you in school when Saved by the Bell was out? Yeah, yeah. Like, um, it, I think it came out in '89, so I was like eight. I want to say, yeah, yeah, I was like eight when it came out, and then by the time it went off the air, I think I was like in middle school or just getting into high school or something like that. And isn't there like some reunion coming out with this with Saved by the Bell? Yes, it's on. Um, <laughs> it's on NBC. Not that, not that I'm interested. Not that I'm interested. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's streaming now. They have their new episodes. I haven't caught them yet, but no, seriously. Yeah, yeah, oh, NBC Peacock app. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah the, the um, it, it is interesting to kind of see that there. I, I wonder, like, I, the reason I asked you is I'm trying to think because I actually watched Save with the Bell, but I think I was like, a, I can't remember how old I was. I, I swear that I was a teacher when I watched this. I don't think I was a kid, but maybe I was. Like, it's so, like, I got to look up when that came out. But I I actually have, um, I, like, I love watching, like, high school shows and stuff like that. Because you, <laughs> yes. you relate to it as a teacher, right? But you're watching, like, student drama and things like that. Did, did you know <laughs> this show? So if you like Save with the Bell, do you know the show Degrassi? Do you know this? It's a Oh, of- I've heard of Degrassi. Drake was on there, right? That's where you got to start. <laughs> yes, that was like so they actually I, I remember um I remember watching it when Drake was on, but I can't remember, I like I cannot remember his name for the life of me right now. Like his actual name. I don't I guess it's Aubrey. Aubrey, Aubrey uh yeah. so he was on and he was like I, they had like there's this is such a there's like an old show and whatever and they like had this band, it was like terrible music, <laughs> and you're kinda laughing. And so they kind of like redid it, but now it's like, uh, his name was Jimmy Brooks and he's like a rapper. And I'm okay. like, oh, this is like terrible. Like such, oh, you know, no. terrible, but I want to watch it. Cause you know, it's exactly, <laughs> and especially like it's Canadian television. And then, <sighs> and then if you watch it, like, and then, and then somebody's like, Hey, like, have you heard of this Drake guy? I'm like, I'm like, who's Drake? And they show me, I'm like, that's the kid from Degrassi. What? He's like a <laughs> rapper. And then I like went back and watched like old rap clips. I'm like, it's actually pretty good. Like it was actually, because <laughs> you, know, like, you can, it's like so Drake. Like you could just hear his voice, right? You've never, yeah. you've never seen it before. Uh, you know, I don't think I've seen a full episode. I've seen like yeah. clips. I see the one that they always reference, like when Jimmy got shot or something. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. Like, it's like a whole, like it's like anything that's going on in like school is like they'll take it and make it like an episode, right? Oh, wow. Yeah. So they, you know, and they, they actually, there's, um, <laughs> this is from your Saved by the Bell comment, by the way, that I'm bringing this up. There, <laughs> there's a, so there's the song I'm Upset by Drake and there's a video with it. And, I, I always wondered why you put it out. Cause like, it's only going to actually appeal to a very small audience, but mm. basically for that video, he did like a 10 year anniversary reunion, like a high school reunion what? with the people from Degrassi. Oh, <laughs> so if you watched it, it's amazing. If you actually watch the show, but if you did watch it, I'm like, you probably have no clue what's going on right now. <laughs> Cause it's like, that so it's so Canadian, right? So. Hey, you, you mentioned we were talking before, uh, and I, I love talking about some of this personal stuff because I didn't know this about you. You told me that you actually, not only like were like singing, but you actually have an album, which is incredible. Yeah. It's, it's like three songs on there. I like, and the rest of it is like absolute trash. Like I was just trying to figure out how to, <laughs> how to use the equipment and when, stuff. When was but... it? Like when, when did this come out? Whew. I want to say we started Royalty Records. That was the name of our record label back in 2002. And that we released it in like 2003. And I was just really trying to learn the process. Um, but it was kind of like a precursor to Edge Match in a way. It taught me a lot about like That's right. contracts and like the business world and stuff like that. So, yeah, but it was it was okay, interesting. So like who, who are your like musical influences? Like who, who, do, you, who do you listen to? Cause I'm like a big, oh. obviously like my, my background's like, you know, albums and stuff like that. Like I love music. So yes. Who, who are you, who are you influenced by? Oh, I'm digging your background by the way. Thank you. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But like, I, I listen to a little bit of everything. Um, I would say my absolute favorite singer is Aaliyah. Um, I also listen to a lot of En Vogue, TLC. And then I also like, 
I also like rocker, like women in rock singing over hard beats, like Evanescence, yeah. Garbage, Alanis Morissette, you know, like um, I like trip hop from back in the day. I don't know. Um, yeah, trip hop was like my thing in high school um, with like more Chiba, Portishead. Um, well, I wasn't that into Portishead until I was older, but you know, I like was, just I a little bit of everything. Chiba. I actually know who more Chiba is. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I, I, I want to give you a high five right now. Like, <laughs> man, I actually, Aaliyah is like, I miss you. That's her, right? Yes. That actually, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's the one. So I have like on my, you, you know, like you have, I got an iPod and then, you know, you got the iPod shuffle and I swear like, because so like every song that I've like transferred from device to device um has stayed with me and i actually have like nice. because Aaliyah starts with a it's like always yeah. like one of the first <laughs> songs that plays no matter how long i've had my device right oh man <laughs> yeah that's that's awesome like yeah. bortiva and that uh, it's interesting because you have like i i think people a lot of times that are really into music are appreciative of so many different kinds of music right it's not like they're yeah. just stuck to a genre right and alanis morissette also Canadian. Yes. Yes, indeed. She's yeah. also, there's actually, um, I don't know if this happened yet. There's supposedly uh, like a Jagged Little Pill Broadway show. I heard of that. I heard of that. I haven't seen it, but I heard of it. <laughs> That's what's up. Yeah. I'm going to check that out. I, I don't know if, like, I don't know if it's supposed to happen and like COVID wrecked it or delayed it or something like that, or it's, it's happening, but yeah, that she actually, again, and it's, it's going to be weird because this is what you're going to think Canada is. She actually started on a Canadian television show. Yes. Well, and it was called, you can't do that on television. And, One of my favorites. <laughs> and somebody, and so, and she actually, I don't know if you know this about uh, Alanis Morissette, but She's got like that kind of edgy, I don't know, like the description. Uh, it was almost like, like alternative a little bit, right? When, yeah, yeah. But there's like, I swear she hides it. It's like, she has like this really super pop album. Before. What? You see, people don't know. <laughs> and it would like the, when I think of her, when I think of her original music, it would be almost like, Tiffany with I think you're alone now. Do you remember that? Are you song? serious? Yeah, yeah. You, gotta, you gotta look it up. Like uh, I cannot remember the song and it's gonna bother me. But it was just like these two, it was like there was like Alanis pop phase, and there and there was like Alanis emo phase. Oh man. Yeah, you gotta find the pop music because it's it's pretty it's actually like there's a cool little video and they're all dancing yeah. and it's so different. I'm gonna have to look that one up. Yeah. But but yeah, but that show, you can't do that on television. That was like my first favorite show. Like they used to play what? on Nickelodeon back in the day. There's... Yes, yes. Yeah, no, and I remember I... um that's yeah, a, yeah. That's she a was a Canadian show too, right? Yeah, yeah. But they had like uh the kid in the dungeon, Alistair in the dungeon and the blue skies, Barthy Burgers, all that. <laughs> yeah, I think I think because I think actually there is like a so I didn't know that about that show, but um, Nickelodeon also uh, played Degrassi, which actually gave like Degrassi this super cult following in the United States, right? Yes. So like yeah. every now and then when I'm in the U.S., which hasn't been in a while, someone will say like, "Hey, did you watch Degrassi?" I'm like, "Yeah, of course I watched Degrassi." <laughs> we only have two TV channels in Canada, so like you don't have a choice, right? So oh, that's, that's amazing. <laughs> No, yeah. the one time one time i'm gonna ask you i'm not gonna put you on the spot here but i i gotta hear i gotta hear music like i gotta hear you sing right i do oh, not know this about you yeah yeah at some point i will I, the the truth is i'm like super shy when it comes to singing like if i go to karaoke and there's like a <laughs> microphone in my hand then yeah. it's a different story you know <laughs> but like on the spot i'm i'm just like no oh. good i freeze up it's like during headlights <laughs> So like what, what I find interesting, and I don't know what you think about this is that like, one of the things that I try to do when I'm doing this podcast and interviewing people is I want to, I love talking to education, but I also talk about those other things. And I think that, I think those other things make you a good teacher, right? I think that if you're so solely focused on, on just education, 
I think it kind of loses a little bit of its purpose. So like how of all of these other things that you do and you have so many interests and like, it's not even, I, I don't even want to call them interests because it's not like you, you do this, right? Like you, you have an album out, which now like I gotta have an album. I'm gonna, you just wait for the <laughs> George Sarah collab coming out. Yeah, we can make it happen, you know? <laughs> I'll DJ, I'm not gonna sing, but I can oh. like background mixes. Um, but like, how, how have all these other things that you do that aren't, that are outside of education actually made you a better educator? Yeah, I think that a lot of it um, has helped me connect with students, mm -hmm. you know, like um, when, so I, I was in the classroom for a little over 10 years. Um, and I know that our my students, we vibed over a lot of the same things. Um, we vibed over music, we vibed over like movies, we vibed over pop culture. Um, and even when we didn't, you know, just like being able to share that with one another, whatever we geeked out about, you know, mm -hmm. that that really helped us to uh, to build a connection. And there's always common ground, you know, sometimes you got to go digging a little deeper for it. But, you know, there's always that common ground and uh, bringing that in. Um, and in addition, various skill sets, you know, um, like I came in to education alternatively certified. And uh, my background was video and, you know, throughout the years that video background has really served me well because that was like a skill set that that I had pretty early on in the process. Um, and now, you know, with iPhones and all different kinds of things, you know, Android phones don't want to be device uh, favoritists, but, you know, like all of our different devices um, now it's it's easy, you know, uh, video is everywhere, but I, I know a few years back, um, then that wasn't necessarily the case. And having that skill set was something that, um, that my students, um, my students used to love to do video projects. So that was, uh, that was something that, that, you know, that helped to bring it in. Well, this is, so it's interesting you said, cause one of my favorite things that I am very grateful for during this this time, right? Where we have the pandemic, we're socially distanced is I was doing this podcast on my own, just me mm -hmm. talking to it, you know, to a camera. And now I get to have these conversations and I've, I've actually known you, I feel for a very long time, but just to yeah. kind of sit and have a conversation with you, I feel like th I'm so selfish. Cause I just love this conversation. Right. And just to learn all this it. stuff about you. And w I'll tell you this, Sarah, and I've been this from the bottom of my heart. Every time I like see, your stuff, see the, the stuff that you share, you always bring light to my day every single time. Oh, and you have you. for years. And I think, I think that I'm not alone in that. I think a lot of people really appreciate just how much you've brought to their lives, right? Not just the people you work with directly, but uh, hopefully you, you get that praise because I know that you are a very positive influence to people like myself. So I really appreciate you. Well, thank you so much. And likewise, I mean, I, I learned so much from you and with you. And um, I was looking back, like I said, through earlier blogs. And one of the very first blogs I wrote was about you and uh, meeting you for the first time at uh, Edscape, like back in 2013. In so, New Jersey? In New Jersey, yes. Oh, that, I didn't <laughs> and know And you that. retweeted that blog. Like when I tweeted it out, I remember that you, ret you retweeted it. And I was just like, oh my gosh, this is awesome. And this was like... I think that that might've been one of the first times that you and I connected. I, 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 I remember, I remember Edscape, but I didn't, I did not remember that. So that is yes. pretty cool. So, Hey, everyone yeah. that's listening, um, you're going to see Sarah's like, uh, you can connect with her on Twitter and you're going to see her contact. Um, Sarah, what is your Twitter handle? I am at Sarah, the teacher so that's S A R A H D A T E E C H U R. Yeah. And so look at that in the, in the description below, Sarah, seriously, thank you for your time. And thank you, uh, especially for bringing up Saved by the Bell. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> it was, yeah. That's, oh that's, man, that's, this, uh, this is great I, to be here. I, that might be in the title of the podcast somehow. Cause I just loved it. Love it. When you said that. <laughs> I'm like, so down for that. Yeah. Just, I just love the connection. Like, Hey, how'd you get a fi financial stuff? Saved by the Bell. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Zach Morris. Obviously. How does anyone get into it? <laughs> but hey, everyone, thanks for listening. I hope you have a wonderful day, Sarah. Thanks for all you do. Thanks for taking the time to be with us today. Oh, thank you so much, George.